this will be a little clip about p-values because I know uh, from a number of you and from my past leaders that you are having uh, that you would like clarification here. So here we go. What are p-values? Well, what they are, we'll, we'll talk a little bit later. We'll start with what you already know. You know that in a hypothesis test, one of the decision rules can be can be the following reject H naught if the p value of a test statistic is smaller than the alpha. That's the significance level. Okay, that's one of the decision rules. And basically that's what we're gonna talk about. Now Therefore, one of the keys to understanding what the p-value is, is to understand what the alpha is, and that is the probability of a type 1 error. That means that's the probability of rejecting a correct H0, a correct null hypothesis, and we set this, okay? So we set this alpha. That means we, before we do anything about the test, we tell ourselves what probability do, our, do we allow ourselves to reject a correct null hypothesis. Okay, So that's what the alpha is. And even when you make a hypothesis test and use the p-values, you still need an alpha. It doesn't stop you from setting an alpha. So, now to the mechanics of p-value. Let's say we uh, use a t-test. Okay, so we have calculated a certain t-test. Let's also say we have a null hypothesis for set that sum beta i is equal to say 0.7, and the alternative is that beta i is um, let's start with a one-sided test smaller than 0.7. So here we have really larger and equal to 0.7. So now we got a certain t-test. Let's say we calculated it, I'll, I'll just assume I'll, I'll give ourselves a certain number, negative 2.563. I just made this number up. And let's say we set an alpha of, uh, we say, 1%. So how do we know go, go about are determining the p-value. First you, you need to know what is the distribution of this test statistic. Now we know under certain circumstances this will be t-distributed, under other circumstances this will be um, normally distributed. I just now decide we'll use a t-distribution and let me just use a certain number of degrees of freedom. Let's say with 30 degrees of freedom. Now it's important to understand this now this is the distribution of the test statistic if H0 is true. Okay, we always have to remember these distributions are always what we sometimes call a null distribution. So it's distribution if the null hypothesis was true, and here's our null hypothesis. So now let's draw a t distribution, a sketch one. Okay, that's pretty similar to a normal distribution. We know that with large degrees of freedom they converge to each other, so this is t. And we know that t distribution is centered around zero, and let's say we have our test statistic negative 2.563 is here. Now you possibly do know that the p-value graphically is it is the probability underneath our distribution to the left of our test statistic. And it's to the left because we have a negative alternative hypothesis. Okay, we're interested in this sort of evidence down here in the tail. Now, so you know the p-value is this, the size of this area. So, two things before we actually find out how to get this value, we'll now think what the interpretation of that p-value is. Remember where this distribution comes from. This distribution 
comes from the assumption that H0 is true. That means if H0 was true, we would expect to get a value of negative 2.563 or smaller with a probability p val. Okay, so let's write that down. If H0 was true, we would expect a value of our t-test of negative 2.563 or smaller or more extreme relative to our null hypothesis with probability with probability p-val okay so that's what the p-val is and therefore let's go back up here and this is where our decision rule comes from okay this is why when we set our decision rule reject h0 if the p-value is smaller than alpha so we'll actually write this down here now the p-value what that is the probability of getting a our particular t test statistic or more extreme conditional on H0 is true. Okay, so this is what the p-value is. Probability of getting a test stat which we got, the test stat we got, or one more extreme conditional on H0 being true. And we compare that against the probability we allow ourselves to make a type 1 error. So it means this now makes sense if this is smaller than this alpha. This tells us the probability of actually rejecting a correct null hypothesis would be smaller than the alpha if that p-value is smaller than the alpha. So how do we now get how do we now get this p-value? Now if this is a t distribution with um, 30 degrees of freedom we need to go to the table for the t-distribution. So here I have uh, statistical tables. They are like in Wooldridge, and they are the ones you'll get in the exam. So we need to go to k 30 degrees of freedom. So what's relevant for us is this, um, these statistics. Okay, uh, let's just move this a little bit uh, around. So you see the, the headings one tailed and two tailed. So we are now interested in one tailed. Okay? And we know these are all positive values, but we know the T stat is uh, symmetric, so we will get the same values on the negative side. So negative 2.563 is somewhere between these two values, okay, 2.457 and 2.750. So just imagine the negatives here we get that on the other end. Okay, so that means that basically what that means, let me just do two different colors, negative 2.457, um, negative 2.457, now what probability would this cut off? That would cut off a 1% probability. Okay, so the area in the tail to the left of negative 2.5457 would be 1%. And then we have another value, negative 2.75, let's say that's here, negative 2.75, that cuts off a probability of half a percent. So what does that mean for the p-val? Here the p-val got to be larger than 0.005, but smaller than 0.01, okay? Because this area here to the left of this cuts off half a percent. The area to the left 
of this cuts off 1%, our p-value is in between these two values. So the p-value got to be, so our p-value is, uh, let's do it like this, uh, 0.005, that is smaller than our p-value, and that is smaller than 0.01. So it's between 1% and half a percent. Now, as we set an alpha of 1%, we therefore decide to reject H0. Okay, so, and as a just repetition, what is this probability of the p value? So, probability of getting a test statistic as extreme as this or more extreme if the null hypothesis was true. So, now, what is the p-value not? Okay, the p-value is not the probability that h naught is true. Okay, so that's important that we understand that. It can't be this because if you if you look up to our formal definition of what the p-value was here, the probability that we get a particular t-test or more extreme given h0 is true. So it's part of our conditioning statement that the null hypothesis is true. So we can't you know assume that the null hypothesis is true and then get a probability and say well that's the probability that h0 is true we've already assumed it is true. If you don't assume that h0 is true, you can't get the p-value. Okay, so this was for a one-sided test. Now briefly, what would we do if our null hypothesis here had been, uh, the alternative had been beta i is unequal to 0.7? Then again, we have to consider you know, remember what we said, what's the probability to get a test statistic of this or smaller, perhaps I should have said instead of smaller, or extreme or more extreme. That's especially important in the two-sided test. Now, more extreme would mean smaller than negative 2.563 for the two-sided test or indeed larger than 2.563. Five, six, three. So if you have a two-sided test statistic, you're really not only looking on one tail, but we're looking into both tails because we want to know what's the probability of getting a test statistic, the particular value we got, or more extreme. And more extreme includes the other tail as well. So now we basically ha would have to add the red and the green probability. Now, of course, we know they are exactly the same. So once you have that probability to get the p-value for two-sided test, you just have to multiply it with two. Okay. In the t-table, this is sort of done quite conveniently because you have a second information up here. What's the probability for a two-tailed test? So that means in a two-tailed test, our value was between these two values. These two values for a two-tailed test give us uh, alphas of 1% and 2%, so that means in a two-tailed test our p-value would have been between 1 and 2%. So that means what we've done here using uh, the tables, you can get a p-value only into a range, Okay, certainly with the t-table. Uh, how could you get precise p-values? Well, for that we have to use some other information. One way of doing that is to use Excel. Okay, so you could use Excel, write down our test statistic. We need the degrees of freedom. And now you use a function in Excel, and you just need to know it. We need some t distribution functions. You could actually go, let's go to statistical. If you go to t, there's a number of functions with respect to t. Uh, so, for instance, what, what we need is t dist. Okay, in tdist you need to enter your test statistic, that's the x, the degrees of freedom, and you need to know are you interested in the cumulative or 
uh, or the density function. We're interested in the cumulative function. We don't want the height of the density function, we want areas. So click OK, and what we get is 0.007817. And that is indeed, as we've already established, somewhere between half a percent and one percent. Okay, so that's the left hand tail. This function gives you the left hand tail. Let's say you had a um, positive, a right hand tail test and your test statistic had been plus 2.563. We know due to the uh, symmetry of the t distribution, we should get exactly the same um, t, a p value. What you get from that function now is 0.99218. And you need to remember that this function gives you the area all the way from negative infinity to the value which you entered. So if for right hand, for right tail test, the p-value will be 1 minus all that area. So we would have to then calculate 1 minus that value, and we get exactly the same result, 0 0.007817. So you always need to, you know, need to be quite uh, alert. So, and in uh, in Excel, there are all sorts of um, uh, these functions. So, for instance, for the chi-square distribution, you can get exactly the same function to calculate precise p-values. But of course, in an exam, you couldn't do that. So that's the p-value. Let me just sketch what uh, all this would look like if we had a chi-square test. That's very similar to an f-test. Uh, so let's say we have a chi-square test. So, for instance, an LM test for autocorrelation, let's say you get a test statistic of 5.678. Let's say the degrees of freedom you have are 3. This was meant to be a 5. It's pretty rubbish, 5. Uh, let me just do it again. 5. Not pretty, but better. So, again, we can sketch... We can sketch our distribution for the LM test. Let's say it looks something like this, the chi-square distribution. Uh, again, remember, the so this is chi-square distributed with k degrees of freedom if h naught is true. So if we have a particular value, let's say 5.678, as all LM tests, all chi-square tests are right tail tests. Tail tests. Okay, and that means what we are after is this area. This area is going to be our p-value. Again, let's see of how we can use a table. So we need a chi-square table. It's an f-table. Chi-square table. We said three degrees of freedom. We are here. In this row, our test statistic is 5.678. So 5.678 is to the left of the critical value for 10%. That means our p-value has to be larger than 10%. Okay, so the p-value in this case is larger than 10%. And that's all we can say. And now, um, for instance, even if we had an alpha of 10%, we cannot reject cannot reject H naught in an autocorrelation test. H naught would be in the absence of autocorrelation, but works for any chi-square test exactly the same. So again, what's this? Um, let, let us briefly just get what the exact p-value uh, would be. We said the value was 5.678. 5.6783. Again, I've just made up that value. Um, so we want the chi squared distribution. We have that value, that degree of freedom. We want the cumulative one, put a 1 in. We got 0 0.871, but remember what this value is 0 0.8716. 0 Point eight seven one six one six. Yeah. Okay. This is the area of this. This is the size. 
of this area. So our p-value is actually going to be 1 minus 0 0.8716 and that is equal to 12.84%. So if the null hypothesis was true, there would be an almost 13% probability of getting a test statistic at least as extreme as the one we got. Okay, so and therefore we cannot reject H0. So this is the end.